Some things aren't taxed at all because they're considered to be essential items. And these things include maintaining our private helicopters, eating crocodile meat and horse steaks, um, and playing things like bingo. And yet certain other items were taxed because they were considered to be luxury items. And these luxury items included all period products. Hi, I'm Laura Corriton and I started the End Tampon Tax campaign in 2014, which ended Tampon Tax this January. And I also started the social enterprise Sex Ed Matters. So I first came across the issue of tampon tax when I was reading an article and it was talking about the ridiculous things that were taxed. Um, and I came across and I saw that period products were taxed because they were considered to be luxury items. And that just blew my mind. And it was kind of funny to begin with. And then I just kind of got really angry about it. So the first thing was I started a petition, of course, and then I shared it with some friends. Then we started talking to university press, uh, local press, and then we started to contact MPs, to contact other universities, and really it just kind of snowballed from then. I had organised the first campaign protest in 2015, I think it was, and that was actually the first protest I'd actually ever been to. <laughs> it was uh, amazing. And then we were able to go into Downing Street and deliver our petition to number 11. It was that protest and the media that it got and then delivering the petition that ended up gaining us the parliamentary support that we needed to make this change happen. So the end of tampon tax, of course, doesn't end the problem of period stigma or just like general misunderstandings of periods of like women's issues or, you know, any of the wider problems really that the tampon tax helps to, you know, eliminate just one symptom of. But it was also about challenging the stigma that goes along with periods and to solidify the idea that period products are important, uh, not just to the people that use them, but to the whole of society. Um, and if they're important to, you know, 51% of the population, then they should be important to everybody. There's also this brand new relationships and sex education curriculum that has been introduced that's so exciting and I love it. It covers so many really important issues that we've never had to teach before in schools. These issues cover things like consent, like LGBT rights, like sexuality, like gender, like what a healthy relationship is. And it also covers, of course, periods and things like menopause. And it specifically states that all boys and girls and all students should be taught these things, which is like, like so simple and obvious, but revolutionary at the same time. Speaking up about the barriers that you face and the problems you face is empowering, so empowering for yourself as well as for so many other people because uh, any barrier that you face, other people are also going to have faced. And so, yeah, bringing light to that subject and trying to solve that subject uh, will help you as well as all the other people that face it.